All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new video. In this video, we'll be connecting to an Ethereum node and we'll get a balance information, all of this in Java. So without further ado, let's get started. The two pieces that you need to do this is the SDK for Ethereum and a Ethereum node. Now, SDK for Ethereum is this uh, page that's open right now, uh, web3j.io. If you go here, you will find uh, a GitHub link and then through the GitHub link, uh, you can go and get the Maven dependency that you need to add to, in order to get access to the Web3J SDK. Um, so that's part one done, very simple, very easy. The second part is the actual Ethereum node. There are two ways to do this. One is that you set up your own Ethereum node and you let it peer on the network and you let it synchronize over a few hours or a few days. And then once it's ready, you can start accessing it and you can start calling methods on it using the SDK. The second way is to kind of cheat a little bit and to go onto a website called inferior.io, which is open right here, uh, create a new project. So I've created a project called YouTube um, and get the API keys for that. So in this case, we have uh, multiple networks available uh, that we can access um, and we will be accessing the mainnet in this case, right? Uh, it's a very simple service. Uh, it's for free. Uh, there are API limits. I think it's 100,000 API calls a day or something like that. Um, so it is quite, like restrictive, but I mean, I mean, I don't think I'll reach that like if I'm developing, right? So it's not too strict. Um, and the other thing is that if you want to scale, if you want to build this uh, on like a large scale, you can always host your own Ethereum node down the line. But to start with, uh, this is a very good option. So um, just just get an account on here, or you can uh, just use your existing account, create a project, and then in the project you will see your um, uh, your endpoints that will have your API keys kind of baked into them. So in here, uh, or the project IDs um, sort of baked into them. So in here we have um, our endpoints available. So I'll copy those. Um, and I've already gone ahead and copied the dependency from here and I've added it into uh, the IntelliJ. This is a very simple Maven project. There's nothing um, extra to this. It's box standard Maven project with Java 11 um, and it does nothing at the moment. If we go ahead and build this, um, it won't do anything. It will just sort of um, do its thing and then yeah, success. <laughs> so uh, we've, we've, uh, we've added the SDK. Um, so let's start building this. Uh, there's a main method here that we've just added. Um, and the easiest thing that we can do is to create the Web3J client. That's the, that's the first step. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, Web3J.build. Um, to be service and then we can just paste in the address in there. So super simple, super quick um, and very simple, right? So basically what we've done here is we've created a Web3J client um, and we're using the HTTP service. Uh, if you remember this, you can always, you can also use the WebSocket one, uh, but each has its own speciality obviously. So uh, in this case, we'll just use the simplest one, which is HTTPS. Um, and just to get on with it for now. Um, the other thing that we need is we need a account to query the balance on. Now, um, I don't really know any accounts. I mean, I have my account, but I will. I would rather not use my account <laughs> as an example on a YouTube video. So I'm using a account that I just found. It's a random account that I found on Etherscan. Um, yeah, and there was a last transaction 56 minutes ago. So uh, I just basically, that was the latest block at the time. So. Um, yeah, this is a very simple account. So we'll copy the account address, um, go back here and we'll do final string address equals that, right? Um, so we have the address that we want to query. We know what the balance expected is. We're expecting that much balance exactly, right? Um, so we will do that. So, um, uh, actually, no. So yeah, so the easiest thing that we can do is to call client dot get ETH balance, um, ETH get balance. Um, we need the actual address. So we'll pass in the address here and we need the block parameter. Now the block parameter is the parameter that you want to get the block uh, till for the balance. So we obviously want to get the latest balance. So we can just do um, default block parameter value of um, and then uh, latest. Uh, it's an async API, so we can just do send async and then get uh, ideally with a timeout, let's say it has to return in five seconds. Very simple. Um, uh, yeah, so let's add an exception here. Uh, 
and we have the balance response. Uh, let's extract the balance out of this. So the balance is a big integer, um, which is an unscaled value. So um, we can just do that for now. So we can just do um, balance response. Uh, oops, um, balance equals actually unscaled balance. Balance response so get balance. Um, let's just print this out and see what we have. So if we run this code, it should output something similar to the balance that we saw on the website, unless there are more transactions. So two, six, one, three, four, and then a lot of zeros and then ending with 42. Let's go back two, six, one, three, four, a lot of zeros and ending with 42. Perfect. So we had the balance information, but it's not scaled. Um, Ethereum is 18 places for scale. So we can just scale it ourselves. So we can just do big decimal um, scaled balance equals balance oops, unscaled balance uh, dot divide. Actually, uh, we need to first convert it into a big decimal. So new big decimal uh, unscaled balance um, dot divide. And then we'll just create a big decimal um, with a one ending with 18 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, L. Um, set it to scale 18 and then um, rounding mode doesn't really matter, but we'll do half up and standard. Uh, and then we should have the scale balance. So let's do the scaled balance is that and scaled balance is that. Excellent, so we have the exact balance that we expected here. Um, so if you go back here, it's 0, 0, 2, 6, 1, 3, 4 with a lot of zeros and 42, 0, 2, 6, 1, 3, 4 with, it, with a lot of zeros and 42. Perfect, so that's how you get balance using a Ethereum node. Um, one quick note, uh, this API is extremely versatile. There are a lot of components to it. Uh, at the moment, we've only added the core, which is the bare minimum that you need to get balance. Uh, but we can add so much more. You can do contracts, you can, you can deploy contracts, you can send transactions, and you can do a lot of things. A very good way to explore the API is to just go on the client and then just explore the API that's, uh, that's available on the Web3j object itself. Uh, you could also, like a normal person, uh, read the documentation, which I would admit that I didn't do. <laughs> Uh, because when I wanted to do this, I just jumped straight into the Web3J and didn't really read the manual until I needed to do something quite serious. And then I was like, okay, I need to actually read this up and, and then follow that. So um, I would highly recommend going through the documentation. It's very good and explains uh, what needs to be done. However, um, uh, do what you think you need to do. So uh, that was a quick video on how to get balance in future, I'll do a video on how to set up an Ethereum node uh, from scratch and also a video on, on other things you can do with, with Ethereum. Obviously, the possibilities are endless. So thank you very much and have a good day.